Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Why don't we start with your name? Hello, Internet. Today is February 24th, 2015, and this is the Rambling Movie Minute, where we talk movies, television, things we watch on screens in front of our faces. <laughs> I am Wango at Rambling Mango, and as usual, we have Sorga Sorgatron. I am here. There's my shot up here in the studio, ready to talk movies, and man... I had a, there's a dog in the audio. This is fantastic. Um, I had a Michael Keaton doubleheader. I can't wait to talk to you guys about. Nice. Also in studio with you is uh, Ashley. We don't have a tag for. <laughs> no, not yet. We, I, we have to see if any viewers submitted one. She's apparently the dog whisperer, but you can see in the corner on the video there, uh, uh, see, Wicked has joined us. I haven't. Yeah, I have a partner here. He replaced Milongu. Oh, nice. <laughs> Thanks for that. Oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> and our New York connection, Mad Mike. Oh, yeah, Malengo. I'm here. I have a Dalek on my shirt because a movie I saw had something to do with a Dalek this week. <laughs> You're never going to guess which one it is. Hmm. I actually will not be able to guess which one it is. <laughs> were, were you saying a Dalek or were you saying uh, a Dalek, Dalek from Doctor yeah. Who? Mm. No, no, it, it's funny, and I cannot believe it was done, and I laugh my ass off. <laughs> nice. Nice. All right, let's jump right into it. So the box office this weekend. Oh. Big thing, right? Oh. I think this is awesome. No, wait, yes. No, the trailer. Trailer. But why didn't you guys trailer. stop me? I'm trying trailer. to. Malongo, you're getting over your illness. You don't have it's a okay. trailer. You don't have a spot for the trailer. I'm so excited. <laughs> we, can't, we need to fix the document. <laughs> <laughs> I just coughed. That's how excited I am. Hey, so uh, Agent mm-hmm. Hitman, Agent Forty Seven. I f- I think somebody forgot to tell them they already made this movie. Yeah, about a thousand times. <laughs> I I think you know I've I've always wanted to see Zachary Quinto in a movie where there's a lot of really cool powers like this. Except I just wanted Siler the movie, and it seems like he's <laughs> random dude driving. Yes. Well, is, I, you know, I, I'm a fan of the uh, the the Hitman Agent Forty Seven series. I'm even playing the the, the iPhone game of it, um, and uh, this this seems like a little more true to the game. I, I actually do own the uh, 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 the Timmy Elephant one. You know, the Justified guy, Deadwood guy, uh, uh, take on on the role. It was all it was all right. I mean, it just kind of felt like any other. I think in my head, I'm confusing it with uh, the Jason Statham uh, 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 drive. What's that one where he just drove? He was oh, the transporter. The tra- oh yeah, yeah, like yeah. it felt like I, from my recollection, it was a lot like transporter. Um, but that was it. But nothing real special. This this looks really interesting and really fun. And, looks and, like great special effects. Mm-hmm. But the the dialogue looks a little stale or sounds uh, a little stale. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Malengo, you got a, You got a guest over there. Can you tell us uh, uh, what what she may think of this oh. movie? <laughs> she's very excited for Agent Forty Seven. <laughs> she's so my favorite she person. Her, my, uh, oh jeez. <laughs> Uh, Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> She's taking the mic with her. I need, I need to pop mic back. Uh, oh, oh no! She's not happy. We have dogs. What we have did children you in this do, episode. Malengo? <laughs> I, I did. I did approve. Mal- Malengo, just show her the new Power Ranger movie that came out. Everything will be fine. There you go. Just show her Fifty Shades of Grey. Uh, <laughs> what? What? If that's your endorsement for no that. <laughs> Bad, Ashley. Oh, bad. Um, yeah. So, speaking of Fifty Shades of Grey, that's a good segue, right? Yep, I did that on purpose. <laughs> it's eight, 40, 74% roughly. Wow. What? You predicted it. <laughs> what? Still came in first place. Told ya! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> it's no compete February, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it barely came in the first place. But I think even crazier than it tanking 74% and still coming in first place 
Hot Tub Time Machine 2 came in seventh. That's so sad. So I'm not sad about it at all. That's that so movie sad. looks like a piece of crap. Nobody went to see that movie. Well, enough people to bring in $5 million. I don't think it's going to make back its budget. $14 million. I think it's yeah. more people, about the same people that saw the interview, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I didn't realize John Cusack wasn't in it, but that puts a damper on it, I think. Was he not in it? I no, thought, I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, no, 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 he's not in it. Yeah, see? No wonder. <laughs> it's like it's like hanging all of the Hangover sequels without the guy who gets drunk and lost. Yeah, <laughs> or without Bradley Cooper. Or or without <laughs> Zach Galifianakis. Yes. It's, like, it's like having the Hangover without one of the main guys in the Hangover. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to talk about Zach Galifianakis and Birdman. Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> yeah. man. Such so, a role, mm-hmm. such a change for him. Mm-hmm. But a good one. Yes, that was mm-hmm. a pretty big change for him. Uh, so, speaking of Birdman, why don't we just go into the Oscar talk? Uh, yes. <laughs> um, did anybody actually get through all of the Oscars? I got through uh, most of it. I didn't. I missed a part because I was watching Girls at the time. You know, this this is the interesting <laughs> thing uh, with the Oscars. I was watching a pay per view. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were watching wrestling, which is actually ironic because I feel like the Oscars, the way people describe the Oscars, even though they have the Oscar party, is how we try to sit through three hours of Monday Night Raw every week. No, and it's like mm-hmm. we have to support each other, and uh, but we just like, oh, it's such such a long thing, but I gotta watch it, right? Yeah. It seems no, like that to same be fair. Feel. If Raw had one segment where, um. There is uh, Val Kilmer's Batman suit in a musical montage. It'd be a lot easier to get through. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. That'd be mm-hmm. that'd be classing it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, also, if if Neil Patrick Harris just randomly stripped down to his underwear during an episode of Raw, <laughs> that also might make it easier to get through. It'd be very odd. Play. Everybody's odd place, already in their underwear, but, though. I yeah. would say that was the highlight of his of his time there. I don't know. I think it was just very, very stale. I don't know. I, he just wasn't that good. I'm sorry. I love him, but yeah. he was not a good host. I think he was very nervous. It, it felt like he was rushed. Too. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if that was because they were rushing him or if he just felt like keep the show going. I think the yeah. first, I don't know. I think the first few jokes fell flat and maybe he sensed that in the audience and then he started to panic. Well, I mean, it's, I not, it's also not like he wrote the show. Well, right. That's true. That's well, true. the Birdman, the Birdman skit that he did, I thought was the best. Yeah, I agree. Um, so yeah, Birdman taking Best Picture was, I mean, based on the way the night went, uh, I guess I wasn't surprised by this. I was actually kind of, kind of happy compa- compared to Boyhood. I think a lot of people thought Boyhood was going to take it. I think I did. Or yep. or American Sniper. Mm. But um, but yeah, like uh. Running, uh, running down the list. I actually, I don't really want to. Was there anything that anybody was like surprised about, really? Um, I was a little bummed Michael Keaton didn't get Best Actor. I agree. Yep. I understand it. I I saw, uh, Theory of Everything, and I saw Birdman. Uh, I th- saw Theory of Everything on Sunday. I saw uh, Monday. I saw Theory of Birdman today. I get it. I don't necessarily agree with it though. Hmm. That's interesting. The one thing, um, I guess for me, the animation section, because that's what, uh, what I do. I, uh, I don't know. I was, I kind of wanted, um, Lego movie to be in it. I thought it sucked that Lego movie got snubbed. I thought the reaction to being snubbed in the, uh, in the musical or the music number that they did was freaking awesome. That was amazing. Mm -hmm. It really was awesome. Everything is awesome. (laughs) <laughs> everything is cool when you're snubbed from a show <laughs> yes um, but it seemed like they were basing this a lot at least for the animation features on like emotional appeal and I don't know Big Hero 6 was good but How to Drain Your Dragon too dealt with like a lot of stuff like I felt like that should have taken it I I think it's a I think it might be a thing of Hollywood shying away from sequels. I yeah, I guess so. I mean, big, big, big Hero Six was I mean it wasn't a news story because it's based on comics, but it was like 
you know, it, it wasn't it wasn't a sequel, it wasn't a remake, it wasn't anything like that. That's why I thought Lego Movie should have been in with the nominations too. Oh, yeah. But if if one of those movies had to win, I'm glad it was Big Hero Six. Yeah. Also, uh, the Grand Budapest Ho- Budapest Hotel <laughs> that that raked up a lot of uh, wins, which I thought was surprising. Although a lot of it was like set design and stuff like that, but good for them. I yeah. thought for a movie that I had no interest in seeing, and a lot of people said it was fairly good. Did you see it though? No, I didn't. No, oh, it's it's good. I recommend it. <laughs> It's not. It's not. My, I tried to watch it. I got through about the first fifteen minutes of it, and I just realized this is not my kind of movie. Yeah, Wes Anderson is does not appeal to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the last thing I'll say about the Oscars, real quick, is I thought they did a good tribute for Selma, with all the like backlash that they got. Although I thought it was kind of weird because it's like you know once you get backlash, it seems kind of weird to just say, "All right, now we're gonna do a whole bunch of tributes," but. They were actually okay for what it was, um, but that's that's what I thought of it, and that's my two cents in that. I don't know. Did anybody else really care about what they did for Selma for the awards? I think it's a beautiful song. I mean, from a tribute perspective, I don't think you could get much better. I thought it was pretty. I, I thought I liked it. Yeah, I mean, I think the problem with the Oscars is the same thing that like everybody. I think the same argument happens where it's like this this award show is really just, you know, the actors and Hollywood patting itself on the back. Yeah. So But they make it about so much more. Yeah. <laughs> they they try to squeeze in like um Patricia Arquette with her, you know, equal rights for women, which I am totally on board with, but yeah, they, they do use that as a as a place to express their beliefs and opinions. But uh props to whoever was monitoring Meryl Streep for the entire show yes. because her reaction to that was, was amazing. On point. It was <laughs> on point. Yeah. Like I want to see Meryl Streep fist bump about more things. <laughs> just in general. Like I want that to be a reaction to like the next Avengers movie. Like you show Ultron, you see Meryl Streep you're like, yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like um I also read an article this week that was saying like how I don't I, I don't blame Neil Patrick Harris for this, but these were the lowest ratings in six years, and wow. they've been declining. Um, so, yeah, I guess that just adds to the point that, like, I almost forgot to watch the Oscars. And I was like, my wife literally was like, aren't you going to talk about this on the show? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I guess. I watch. Well, a lot of people are watching Walking Dead. Yes. There's a lot of other stuff that people would rather be watching. I usually watch uh, Girls on... Monday or Tuesday, so that's... I know that's what Ashley was watching. I was, yes, from 9 to 9.30. You know it. <laughs> yeah, I think Every around Sunday. 11.30, I, I literally was like, I gotta go to bed. Like, what's going on? <laughs> and then it ran over. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, to be fair, especially with award shows, you're going to hear about what all the best parts were the next morning, and you can watch those parts that's true. in much easier to digest 5 to 10 minute bites. That is true. Yeah, like, I mean, I follow a site that um, was already had video up of every, like, musical performance or really good acceptance speech right after it happened. So, I mean, I didn't have to watch the Oscars. I still felt like I watched the Oscars. Nice. And plus, and plus I would have boycotted it based on the fact that they didn't give Guardians of the Galaxy a special effects award. Hmm. They made you feel for a tree. You know, they had a really good, there was a really, really good response from the director uh, uh, about that, about how uh, just because it's big budget, it's, it's snub. He, he's a storyteller. You know, he's done all kinds of movies. He listed them off. Um, but no, it, it was a really good reaction to that. And, um, and, and the fact that there was a lot of putting down of his genre. And you talked about, Mike, how, how when we were talking before about how um, there were several superhero movies, big budget superhero movies that are put in there versus Interstellar, right? Which I haven't seen Interstellar. I don't know how great the graphics were. I thought it was Gravity oh. when we were talking about it. Um, but um, That's what I'm saying. Because... Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, you know, it, it, and maybe it did do a great job, you know, versus, you know, something like that. But we're talking about, like, wasn't it, it was visual effects and art d- direction, right? 
that mm-hmm. they won for. Like, I think Guardians of the Galaxy is is tremendous in what they did for the design and everything. Even if it right. does is based off of a comic book, you know, it's it's not Captain America and and it's not really a superhero movie. It just happens to be in that universe and I, attached to that. I mean, I feel like the closest the Oscars are ever going to get to acknowledging that hey. Some superhero movies are actually just really good films. Right. Is he mm-hmm. le- is he's le- is he's Ledger, mm-hmm. and oh that's gosh, only yeah. because he passed away. Yeah, I know that. That annoys me. That's what that comes to because he did a phenomenal job, and then I he- mean, I guess Birdman is kind of close, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, kind of. I, I mean, know you know. Well, yeah, when it came to visual effects, though, I mean, it was going up against Guardians. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes broke, like, a lot of barriers in terms of technology. Captain America looked really nice. And then X-Men Days of Future Past, I, I would say, is probably the weakest on this list. But, I mean, come on, those are some good movies, I, I guess. I mean, Guardians was a movie where two of the leads were not actually there. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> like, I mean... But well, you could say the same thing for Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. No, my... I know, and that and that's my point. Like either of those seems uh, like I haven't seen Interstellar, but oh. I thought it was Gravity when I saw the trailers for it. Just like, oh, they landed on a new planet instead of just flying out in space. Was that Paul Franklin? I think isn't that what he won? Last it was back to back years, and I think he won for Gravity last year. Of course he did. So he just <laughs> reused a bunch of stuff. Um... <laughs> Let's, uh, let's jump over to the Razzies real quick. So uh, the worst pictures, right? <laughs> of these five worst pictures, I agree with about three and a half of them. <laughs> but the one that won, I never even heard of. Kirk uh, Cameron's Saving Christmas. Oh, I've heard oh, of yeah. it, all right. Well, I've heard of it. I... <laughs> <laughs> oh, For those man. of you who do not remember uh, Kirk Cameron, most notably from Full House, maybe? Nope. No, no. Family Ties. Growing Pains. Growing Pains. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, that's <laughs> that's Michael wrong. J. Fox up there. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. Show oh, me Mike, what would they do without you. <laughs> Come on, guys. Thank Come goodness on. for you, Mike. He, that, that movie pulled in a 0%. On uh, Rotten Tomato. Wow. That That's is, impressive to do. That is epic. That's impressive to do because as bad as some movies are, like, to get a zero on Rotten Tomatoes, that's hard to do. Like, what does have Geely have? Try. Or G- what is it, Geely with um, Jennifer? <laughs> it probably scored higher than that. Oh, I'm sure it did. <laughs> and that's like the, the worst room, movie ever. I'm sure it scores higher than this. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, the other movies oh, were dear. left behind. Uh, with Nicolas Cage, The Legend of Hercules, the first of the two Hercules movies that we got <laughs> last year. Oh. Uh, Ninja Turtles. Hey. I told you, Mike. Hey. It That's sacrilegious. Uh, it, 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 wasn't that, it wasn't that bad. No. It wasn't that bad to be thrown in. It's with not us. the it's best movie. Michael it's not the best movie, but it was a gr- it was great for a Turtles movie. Yeah. And, um, and uh, it was way better than any Transformers movie. Hands down. I'll agree with all those statements. Yeah, they gave Cameron Diaz the worst actress for the other woman in oh. Sex Tape. Hey, I like the other <laughs> woman. I'm just saying. It's not a bad I, movie. <laughs> I don't think... I, I mean, they, they even have Tammy on here for or uh, Melissa McCarthy for Tammy. Like, I, I think that would take... And she was actually kind of funny, but that movie was really bad. <laughs> you, mean, you, mean, you mean the female version of Tommy Boy? Yes. Yes. Oh, Tommy Except, boy. you know, without the humor. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, yes, the Razzies. All right, uh, moving along. Uh, because Malingo, Malingo, Malingo. Yes. Guess what? Yo. It's, mor- it's Morphin Time. Is it oh, Morphin Time? damn right it is. It's Morphin Time. Well, real quick, favorite Power Rangers? Um, favorite Power Rangers. Kimberly. Oh, White Ranger. See, that's what I was going to say. What's up, Green ah. Ranger? I'm going to try and break the norm. What's up, Green I'm Ranger? Sorry, anytime you give a Power Ranger a sarcastic English tiger on the end of his sword that talks to you, <laughs> that's Oh, that's win. right. I mean, but I like the Green Era. I got to go green on that one. Mm-hmm. Ashley, I hear you are very quiet. Uh, no. Were you not a Power Rangers fan? No, I love yeah. the Power Rangers. Kimberly was my favorite. Yes. And I also like Trini. 
I re- Kimber- she's like Kimberly old school. Was the first was the first crush of Mad Mike. Yeah, uh, I yeah. I wanted her and yeah. Jason to get together so badly when I was maybe <laughs> nine, and she always liked Tommy, and it always pissed me off. <laughs> I just wanted Jason and her to get together. <laughs> Uh, well, I th- come I on, guys, chime in, chime in, chime in, <laughs> say something. <laughs> I I think you should watch this new Power Rangers movie then. Oh um, yes. I see. Oh. I I lost track after the originals left, so I didn't get into the new series or or anything current. This is but a, what, whoa, this whoa, is a whoa. little bit different. This, this is, is kind of a like, uh, this is a little this is like Quentin random. Tarantino stuff right here. It is. <laughs> it's awesome. It's like um, Kill Bill. You know, starring James Vanderbeek and uh oh wow <laughs> yeah Katie uh, Sackhoff and Katie Sackhoff who you might know as Starbuck from uh the uh the most recent Battlestar Galactica there she is as the Pink Ranger um and uh who did the director work on cuz he had to have worked on something significant to have something this this good this is just a fan film this is a bootleg this is yeah. not sanctioned this is not anything uh this is the same director that did the Punisher with Thomas Jane uh the 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 fan bootleg flick they did a while ago it's on the same youtube channel um this is tremendous it is a a dark desolate future where they're basically uh training the uh you know kids to fight their wars and uh if, if you get a chance get into the description for this video and watch the why did this movie get made with the director it's h- both hilarious and adds a little bit extra insight into uh what they got into this um but really really digging it um and there, there everything actually about is. this was so good. Mm-hmm. So okay. good. Nope. Oh, lost my lingo. He's choked up about uh, it. I, I, <laughs> I hit mute mid, mid cough. That's all uh, right. There is an actual reboot that is scheduled for next year, 2016. Yeah, but that one's going to be more like Ninja Turtles, let's be honest. Yeah. Let's hope not. It, it I'm may have to get into this directed again. or producer starring Michael Bay. <laughs> At least give me a James Vanderbeek, okay? And I'll be happy. James Vanderbeek as Zordon. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, man. That's or exciting. Lord Zed. One or the other. There you go. That would be... Dr. Amazing. Ooze. I would watch that. Oh, Do you remember I, the original oh, they Power bring movie? back Ivan Ooze. Yeah, Ivan Ooze. That's it, not Dr. Ooze. Ivan I apologize. Ooze, yeah. I apologize. Those were the days. It's okay. I'm sure, I'm sure he has a doctorate. <laughs> Ivan Ooze. <laughs> um, uh, all right, so... Uh, let's, Mike. Shouldn't you be plugging some stuff? Uh, that's right. Uh, uh, slice on Broadway. Uh, pl- Given uh, I'm smelling the pizza, I gotta get it. Oh. Gotta get it here in between shows. Uh, slice on Broadway, providing great pieces for podcasting in Pittsburgh, supporting all the shows we're doing here on Tuesday night. As people can come in, like Ashley here. Yay! Yay! New to the Sorgatron <laughs> Studio family here. Um, and you is, have her like holding two slices of pizza. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Mike, you 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 wanted to say a little something about Slice real quick. Well, you see, Sorg, uh, this is a very special time of the year <laughs> for um, Roman Catholics like myself. This is the time of Lent, um, also known as Everyday Pizza Fridays, because we're not allowed to have meat. Amen. And let me let me tell you, Slice on Broadway has a cheese pizza that is fit for Kevin McAllister. It's fit for you. Mm. So please, support Slice on Broadway. If you are in the Pittsburgh area, if you are in Carnegie, which I'm saying wrong on purpose because that's how Sorg says it. It's Carnegie. I don't care how Sorg says uh, Carnegie. Carnegie. Say it as, say it as the Pittsburghers do. But Slice on Broadway, one of the best cheese pizzas I've had in the uh, Pennsylvania area everywhere um and i'm from new york so you know i know people there you go that's a seal of approval the entire state seal of approval right there well said my friend thank you (laughs) all right so let's jump to what we're watching or what we are excited to watch i will not go first let's well let's okay every we all want to talk about the one thing let's mention everything else that we watched first okay okay i'll just say real quick i watched robocop Mm -hmm. i really liked it I missed the tongue and cheekness well, of the, the original. original or the new. No, one? I watched the new one. I oh. had a, I had a Michael Keaton night with this and Birdman on Saturday when I was snowed in here in Pittsburgh. Yeah, and they canceled my wrestling show that I was supposed to be. So, <laughs> so you were snowed in, decided to have a Michael Keaton night and didn't watch Jack Frost. 
<laughs> no, I wanted to watch new Michael Keaton movies. <laughs> good so, Michael Keaton. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, no. I thought RoboCop was really good for what they did with it. Um, and other than that, I finished off Heroes as we were discussing last week. Only had a few left actually, so I'm really glad and kind of sort of disappointed. One that they didn't go on to a fifth season to wrap all that stuff up. And what do they do without all these people for the new one? So um, I'm very curious to see what they're going to do with that now. So, um, what did you think of it, Sorg? Though, did you like it? I liked it. I mean, it certainly wasn't as good as the earlier seasons, but it wasn't that bad, actually. Right. It's, I mean, it's not. It's not as bad as everyone lambasted. No, absolutely it. not. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, there's. I mean, it, yeah, it was hard to hold up that original mystique, right? Uh, and I was reading that the series was supposed to originally be like new cast members rotating pretty regularly. And then they settled on a few people because people just kind of latched on to Hero and the cheerleader and, and 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 a few other people on there. So, But if you look at like the the most of that cast, I mean, people get killed off and disappeared pretty easily on there, right? Except Allie Larder. Except Allie Larder. <laughs> <laughs> she always comes back in some form or fashion. If only briefly. So they're like, oh, you got two days in between whatever the heck your Resident Evil movie you're working on. Um, yeah, uh, just just do two scenes. We're good. We're good. Just for just for the fanboys. But um, but yeah, uh, that that's what I watched. What about you, man, Mike? All right. Well, uh, I saw a lot of movies this week. Yes, I did. watched I watched Tangled, which I had never seen before. Ooh. Um, it was decent. Uh, not as good as something like a Frozen or a Big Hero Six. But if you have little kids who haven't seen it, uh, it's definitely worth a watch. Mandy Moore was really good in it. Uh, the songs, not really that memorable, personally, to me. Uh, but it was fun. The animation was spot on. And a um, uh, decent villain, too, which was good. Um, I felt like they had to do Tangled so that we could get Frozen. Yes. Yes. But it's, yes. Yeah, yeah I, I can agree with that. Um, I also saw, I went to the theaters and saw The Duff. Um, I wanted to see this. It's actually pretty decent. It, uh, it better than I expected. Uh, I enjoyed it. Like we went to matinee prices, so if you don't want to pay full price, matinee definitely worth it. Uh, Robbie Amell, who is Firestorm on Arrow, is the lead guy in it, and Mae Whitman is uh, the the um, female lead. Really, really good chemistry. A uh, nice storyline between the two, and it's not like insulting to fans. It, rem- it it's not insulting to like just normal people. It reminded me of like Easy A or um, Friends with Benefits. It reminded me of those kind of movies, but set in high school. It was good. They used a lot of. Uh, uh, they kind of took the route of Chef is like incorporating all stuff about social media, which I thought was really interesting too. Because and it, ju- it also just made me realize I would never want to be in high school in the age of smartphones. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, I also saw The Theory of Everything, as I had talked about before. A uh, really good movie. I understand why Eddie Redmayne got the Oscar for Best Actor. Don't necessarily agree with it, but I understand he was really, really good in it. And I have to say uh, my favorite part was right after he got the voice box, he put on he put a box on his head and chased his children around saying, exterminate, exterminate, exterminate. <laughs> Hence the Dalek on my t-shirt. <coughs> so yes, uh, if you've ever wanted to see Stephen Hawking pretend to be a Dalek, for that reason alone, see the theory of everything. If not, it was a really good movie otherwise. Tremendous. Could you say his performance compares to Daniel Day-Lewis in My Left Foot or anything? That's what I heard. Uh, I haven't seen My Left Foot. I, I mean, I could see because it, it was a like without him, the movie would have really suffered. Like if they had a different actor, he carried the flick very much so. Um, the other performances, I mean, were decent, but nothing was like super like popping off. Like there wasn't really that much great chemistry or anything like that. But he really, it, it's it's kind of a one man show. It really kind of is. Uh, unlike Birdman, which has a lot of great performances there. Oh yeah. Awesome. Lingo is muted. I think he's trying to tell Ashley to tell us what you watched this week. That is correct. (laughs) Uh, Well, the big one is the one we're all going to discuss 
soon. So um, I finished watching Girls, so I'm all caught up on that. Um, does anybody else watch that show here? I am a little bit. I, I keep going to HBO and can't remember where I left off. Ah, uh, cannot. Re- there's no HBO is horrible with that. Oh, you like Heroes? I'm like, oh, I watched this episode. I'm, yeah. I'm in. Yeah. HBO. Good luck if you forgot what you watched last week. Uh, yeah, I actually just started watching Girls last fall, and so I sort of binged <coughs> watched the first three seasons, and now I'm you know all gung ho. So. Uh, it, it's good, man. It's just continuing to keep my interest. The character development is really getting interesting. So um, I am I am not caught up with the last episode, but uh, I will speak to last week's episode. Okay. And that dude is crazy. Oh yeah. Well, which dude are you referring to? I'm talking about the <laughs> boyfriend who failed to tell the the girl like, hey. We're not together. Oh, anymore. yeah. Oh, well, no. Okay, I won't spoil it, but wait until you watch this week's episode because the girl he's with turns out to be the psychotic one. Yeah. Well, it's- she keeps her role for everybody who's a fan of Community. This is the blonde girl from Community. Okay. Oh, Julian Anderson. Yes. She translates those characters quite amazingly. So if you're a fan of her in Community, <laughs> you will enjoy that episode or – what I heard, even more. You know, actually, uh, that, that that reminded me of one I, I saw that I completely forgot about. I saw Walk of Shame, also had her in there, by the way, um, oh. with Elizabeth Banks. Um, Why? Why did you watch that? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking through HBO. I'm looking for something for the lady and me to watch. And I'm like, well, that, that, Elizabeth Banks, I, she's entertaining. And uh, no, it was a fun movie. I mean, it's a stupid movie. Let's uh, be honest about it. But um, but no, it was kind of fun. Like Saturday afternoon, what the heck am I going to put on on HBO? <laughs> sort kind of situation. Sort of, you know what you should watch? Hmm. You should download the Comedy Central app and you should watch Broad City. Uh, you know, Broad City is the oh, thing yes. that when I that's when I forget show. to turn off Daily Show and uh, the Nightly Show, um, <laughs> that's the show that ends up coming up, and I watch a little bit of it, like I did today. So. Oh my God, Broad City! It's good. It's good. It's it's on next to- level. Today <laughs> today was the yeah. one with the moving um, naked model. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that show is really good. I'm on season two of it. Um, I I watched I binge watched season one like in a day. It's freaking amazing. All right, since I know we're gonna talk Birdman, I'll just say real quick. Finished <laughs> uh, Black Mirror. Yes. Really, really good show. Yes. Uh, rewatched Begin Again um, with the guy that plays Hulk now. Uh, that's a really good uh, movie if you're into. Music, uh, dude from Maroon Five's in it. It's Adam it's Levine. Good. Yes, I recommend this movie. I also watched on Netflix Brain Food, and I feel stupid for watching it because it's really good and <laughs> it will make you feel stupid too. Uh, well, let's talk Birdman real quick. Okay, we, Birdman. Uh, All right. Um, I don't think we can talk about this without getting spoiler. We just can't. Oh, at this uh, point. well, Sorg. Oh well, yes, I don't have a graphic should... anymore, unfortunately. All right. Well. Um, Ashley, you you are new to the show. Whenever uh, we get into a movie that we know we're going to be discussing the ending of, yep, we have to enter the spoiler zone. <laughs> you are entering another dimension, a dimension of sight and sound, a dimension where Michael Keaton is not wearing a mask, but he's apparently... kind of wearing a mask. <laughs> apparently, not much. You are else entering mask. the spoiler zone. Right. Kudos, my oh, friend. Kudos. So we we can't you, really talk about this film without discussing the concept in general because we it was hard to tell exactly what this was going to be, even from the trailers. I felt going into it. <laughs> um, Mike, I talked with you about the technical uh, amazingness of this. There are no cuts in this thing, Mm-mm. like no visual for a na- until the last like five minutes of the show. It it is it is. A consistent tracking shot, shots. Yep. tracking <laughs> shots, um, a lot of you know, a lot of long takes um, on everything. I mean, there are transitions, there are obvious transitions. There's time lapses. There's there's well, there's dark in there. I'm sure they put a cut there, kind of thing. Um, and it's fantastic that they were able to Amazing. do something like that. It, it, the, the, I was reading on it the production, like how much all the stuff that they usually do on the post production, they had to do on pre production to make sure it would work. Hmm. And they can't mm-hmm. really cut things out and make those decisions after afterwards, so they did it in advance. There's a there was a cinematographer that they wanted to hire that said no. I don't want to do this. <laughs> they they uh, that apparently like talked hard about, work. Yeah, I know. It's like well, their big thing was like this hasn't been done before. 
where do I start? There's no reference, right? It's like, well, yeah. some, somebody had to start somewhere. So now there's this. Have, uh, have you ever seen Silent House with Elizabeth Olsen? That was one continuous shot, too. Mm. It's, a, it's actually a really good movie. So, But mm. it, it's the same thing. It just follows her the entire time and never cuts away. Mm-hmm. Write that down. <laughs> I'm looking it up. You guys I'm are going to watch that. I still have The Secretary on Netflix from, from when we talked about that a little bit ago. I, I forget I, why that, it was that recommended. Creepy. Yeah, it does, it's actually. It's really good. <laughs> it's really, really good, though. But back to Birdman. Um, one thing that did bother me mm-hmm. is score. Because it was the drum? A, it was a lot of drums. Mm-hmm. It was an awful. It was jazzy, awful man. It was jazzy. I think you either liked that or you didn't. Yeah. It was either you know it was cool or it was a dist- it was a it was a very kind of indie feel to it because yeah. of that. I don't know. I think it added to the intensity. Playing it. That's what I liked. Mm-hmm. So, um, but no. I, but generally, I thought, oh, we got a dog going. Um, but generally, I, th- I thought the movie was awesome. Um, you know, interesting story. Um, you know, the kind of does he really have these powers kind of aspect and, and everything. Yes. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it was a lot of fun. Where, where do you guys, where do you guys come down on that? With the powers or, yeah. just, well, I think they had to do that to explain the ending. And no, but, no, but like, does he have them? I, I'm, I'm still on the fence about it. Honestly, I'm honestly still on the fence about it. I felt like, like, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. That's good. I mean, that that's what brings up the whole ending of like what really happens. Like, is he alive? Is he dead? A, Does he have these powers? Does he not? The a, whole even even his split personality, which was awesome, where it's just like, come on, man, you know, you just want to jump. Let's end this. It's like there was so much like pull and and twist. Like that movie was amazing. So, what do you think happens at the end? I mean. What's your interpretation of it? It's there was a really good um, back to work. They had an after dark where they talked about it. Uh, a spoiler, spoiler zoni. And um, you know, their their instant thing was like, oh, maybe he really did die, and this is everything fell into place. Yeah. Because the daughter started, the wife started attending to him. He did this, and then he flew out, and and he she, finally reached his peace. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Um. So so it was kind of like the development of that because you know, you always saw the powers when nobody was around, mm-hmm. right? And except except at the end. Right, Except when the she end. notices it. Right, and did that really happen? And I noticed it was the only cut too. So, mm-hmm. I it it reminded me of the wrestler. Like yeah. it reminded me a lot of the wrestler. Like if this was just called the superhero actor, mm-hmm. and it was like because it seemed like very much in the whole thing. Like because the wrestler, you're following him around backstage. He's taken a career hit. He's trying to build himself back up. And you get an ambivalent ending at the end. Like, I don't know. It just seemed really, really familiar. It also was similar to Black Swan in certain ways. I mean, I yeah. think Black Swan had more of a, a defined ending. You weren't. It wasn't as you know ambiguous. But it, I think just somewhat of the concept of it is the same. Just not as dark as Black Swan because this was more of a dark comedy. So and definitely not as um, heavy on lesbianism. There you go. Well, I mean, well, there was a it was in there. I mean, well, yeah, there was I mean, a scene. There yeah, was a so, scene. You know. Yep. You had to throw a little bit of that in there. I mean, it is theater. There you go. But uh, Michael Keaton right. is just amazing in it. I mean, what seriously, what a comeback. I uh, wanted him to win. So uh, all right. Um, Even Ed, Nor- Ed Norton was really good. Yeah, Ed oh, Norton he was. was amazing. He was. And so was Naomi Watts. They all were good. Mm-hmm. All of them were. Yeah. Emma, all of them. Yeah, I know that was one of the big things that a lot of like uh, sites were talking about. Like the the character roles and actors in in Birdman were like amazing mm-hmm. and very strong and developed on themselves. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it was it was yes, I recommend this movie if you have not seen it. I don't know what rock you're under, but go and see it. <laughs> nice. Uh, I I know Sword wants us to wrap up the show uh, all of eight minutes ago, so. <laughs> Real quick, coming out this weekend, we have Focus, uh, Will Smith's movie, uh, The Lazarus Effect, which I am not sure what <laughs> I think of that yet. <laughs> I, I'm just going to – I have a free – I actually have free uh, tickets to see that, and oh. I don't know if I can go. So if anybody in the Pittsburgh area wants my tickets, tweet me. Uh, Maps to the Stars, 
I have no idea what that is. Seventy that seventy one is a really good movie, but I don't think it's open for major release. It might just be in smaller theaters. Uh, dealing with the Irish uh, religious stuff going on back in the seventies, um, and yeah, that's it. So I'm seeing a big week for Focus. I'm seeing a big week for Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> it's gonna make a comeback. Yep. <laughs> I feel really like tired. all of the women really that were tired. disappointed in Fifty Grades of Shea are going to go see Will Smith take off his shirt. No, Crazy. no. What? It's 2015. No one is paying to see Will Smith take off his shirt anymore. <laughs> I want to see uh, Will Smith make a comeback. Will Smith needs to be a Michael Keaton. Ashley, you want to know where that where that comeback's going to happen? Where? Suicide Squad. Yeah. I'm be. predicting it because he, he's playing the lead. He's playing Deadshot. I think he's going to be really, really good. Nice. I'm very excited for that movie. I don't like that he's playing that shot. But anyway, that's me. <laughs> uh, where can we find you guys? Mike? Uh, well, I am at MadMike4883 on the Twitter machine. And I also want to give a shout-out to our buddy DJ Lunchbox. He does a little, a little show called Panel Riot. It's about comics, and it's very, very good. Excellent. Um, I have a lot of stuff going on. Sorgatron.com, Sorgatronmedia.com. I got game reviews, talking tech, talking wrestling. I got daily stuff going on um, all over the place. Uh, so go uh, follow any of that. I'm at Sorgatron, and I tweet most of the things I do. And it'll be very, very busy in your timeline, I'm sure. So, <laughs> Ashley, you got anything to plug? Not yet. No. But I will next week. <laughs> it's coming. It's She'll coming. be back next week. <laughs> Ashley, next no week. plugs, Mason. Yeah. yeah. We'll plug the appearance like for next that. week. I was going to call myself Rambling Ashley, but I don't know if that's an insult or a compliment. I don't know. Uh, that could be a compliment. Something like that. Okay. I'll consider that. <laughs> something of that nature. <laughs> uh, you can find me uh, at tw- on Twitter at Rambling Mango, or uh, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, uh, we should have the site up with all the proper images. So I will be plugging that in the next couple of weeks with some extra uh, videos that I will be shooting for movie draft stuff. Um, but yes, that's where you can find us. Uh, also, you can go to our Facebook page, and we like to post. We posted a lot of stuff this week, guys, mm-hmm. on, on the Rambling Movie Minute page. So definitely go there. Uh, join the conversation. Let us know if there's a movie that you would like and, us to watch and review. And that's actually the, the, the Facebook group you'd be looking uh, for. What's work said? <laughs> <laughs> uh but yes with that uh that's week f- that's wow i can't speak <laughs> that's all for this week's rambling movie minute and until next week have a rambling movie weekend this show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast network find out more at sorgatronmedia.com let's talk tech Tech news discussions from the people in the industry right here in Pittsburgh. Online, gadgets, startups, and more. Check it out at awesomecast.net.